Hello everybody, Reggie Tam here with another five card pot limit Omar video that I know you guys all do love so much. Um, please don't forget if you are watching the videos through, don't forget to leave some feedback, uh, so hit the like button, hit some comments etc so I can just get a feel for exactly how unpopular pot limit Omar five videos are on my channel. But all you know limit players, there will be a no limit video coming out in the next day or two i'm going to be playing some no limit in some pretty fun clubs on poker bros later in the night later in the days and um, when my current good lady wife is in bed um but those videos are probably only going to go up in the facebook group so if you're not in the facebook group please do um please do let me know um sorry not please let me know please do join the facebook group and you'll be able to and the videos there i'm not sure i want to be putting them on youtube just yet i am doing some work with um a pretty well connected person whoops better bring me mic down and do some work with a pretty well connected person who might be able to give me some better guidance on what i can and can't say on poker bros videos that will allow me to make videos because the no limit games there really are you know they are very good games and the games you guys want to be in, especially like the, the UK and Euro guys who played like the late evening, early hours schedule or US players who play a normal evening schedule. There's I've got clubs on there, really good games that you want to be in. I just struggling to find ways to promote them without um without getting in trouble. But that's gonna be my primary focus over the next week or two is to get some of you um, well, not just US guys, get some of you guys into good no limit holding games for the winter um, on Poker Bros. Why did I value bet there? I don't know why I value bet there. I wasn't really concentrating. So, yeah, uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And if you want to get into them clubs already without having seen them, just you know, trusting that my word that they are good games and I promise they are, um, then. Don't hesitate to reach out and get in touch and I can get you in them clubs usually within an hour or so of you contacting me often. Um even less than an hour. Occasionally it takes a bit longer depending on um who's around, but yeah. Right, so we've got a seventy seven twenty four he's gone for the limp raise. Uh, we have double suited kings, he probably has two aces. Let's see if we can't get there. He doesn't have two aces. We've got his suit destroyed, but the seven came, which is unfortunate. And we now have 4% equity. That is unfortunate, because we got it in really good there. Well, in, in PLO 5 terms, I think we got it in really good. Um, didn't hold. That's the fun of the fair with this game. Um, it's been going really well. To be fair, the pot limit Omar over the weekend have done well. Had a bad session last night. I guess I got overconfident. I um, played some $40 buying games and some $60 buying games. Bought him for the maximum each, which is like 200 big blinds or more. And um, lost $140. So that's not a lot of money in, in those games. That's like, what, maybe between two to three buy-ins, depending on in which game I lost the most money in, etc. So that's fuck all. Um, but I didn't learn anything new about the game, but I did learn a few things that I'm going to take forward this week. Uh, number one is that those games are a little bit tougher, they're a tiny bit more aggressive, not quite so many super loose passive players, still plenty, do not get me wrong, the games were fucking good, they just weren't quite as good as these, and they were slightly more aggressive players that I'm not equipped to cope with yet, um, maybe you could find one decently aggressive regular at each table, and then maybe one not very good but aggressive player which just totally changes the dynamic of the game i wasn't prepared for that um i ended up getting in some like three bet situations where post flop i kind of flopped well but nothing to the nuts but too good to fall maybe and i found myself getting it in numerous times with between maybe 32 to, to 40 odd percent equity um didn't win many of them won a few, got cool at a few whales and other spots and what have you. So yeah, overall, I mean, the loss is nothing. It's it's um, very manageable. And I did learn 
quite a lot about myself um, in terms of like how much of this game have I learned to the level of unconscious competence yet and I would go as far to say probably less than 2% of it maybe 5% of it my pre-flop ranges that I'd got quite happy with in terms of like instinctively knowing which hands which kind of hand I should be playing from each position it kind of went out the window a little bit last night and um, because of us facing a bit more aggression I kind of found myself defending hands that Maybe I shouldn't have been defending. Um, so yeah, I've, I've learned that not to get overconfident in this game because th you know I was talking to to Shane this morning. Um, one of the managers that I work with had a nice long conversation with him, and he he said that you know you think you've got this game cracked, and then it'll just come back and kick you right up the ass. Overconfidence and slightly compromising on your ranges pre-flop can make an absolutely enormous difference to your to your success or failure. I learned that last night. It only cost me $140. It only cost me like less than 250 big blinds. So, you know, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but it has served as like a decent reminder to myself to make sure we don't take any liberties. Um, you know, leave this table. We'll be very quickly find another one because this lobby is just stacked with good games. Uh, we're playing the 4-8 games today, which is 8 and 16 cent blinds in US dollars. Just to like, make sure I get my game back on track from last night. Just to make sure that we don't, like, um, if we do have another losing session, it's not, like, super damaging to our confidence or, or the role that I have in this club. Uh, right, so where we are here, we just randomly join this... Uh, yeah, we'll stick to the 8.16 games for now. And that makes more sense. Stick to the plan. Next month, I'm not going to play any hide and don't care how good I do, how much money I win, or lose for this matter. Um, for that matter, we're just going to stick to playing um, 4.8 and 5.10 blinds, which is 16 uh, dollar buy-ins and twenty dollar buy-ins. Although I'm always buying for the maximum, so for me it's going to be thirty-two and forty dollar buy-ins. Uh, my internet seems to be being a bit of a dickhead, which is not good. Yeah, but hub isn't looking happy. Hopefully, it's not going to be a big problem. So yeah, no matter how well or badly I do next month, this is still very much it's it's a huge learning curve for me still, and I want to play. I mean, I shouldn't have done it last night. I want to play without like any being any element of scared money in there, or any element of like, you know, allowing the amount of money on the line to influence my decisions. That is not going to be a thing at sixteen and twenty dollar buying game level, uh, especially in games as soft as these. As you can see, look around the table, and the tables there's not a red tag to be seen. Pink is like super loose, blue is just loose. Um, so there's no doubt I'll. I have edge in these games. Whether I have a winning month next month, um, I expect to. But you can't take anything for granted in this game. But um, I'll class it as a win next month if I just see the whole month out in these games and f find myself at the end of the month feeling that I am better at the game than I was at the start of the month. That's going to be enough for me because I'm dead serious about making Pot Limit Omaha my new game. I've been doing it for like 10 days now, which is possibly my longest ever run at Pot Limit Omaha. Um, I'm deadly serious about it, and am I in this part? And why, why did I not bet a full house on the river? It's because I'm talking too much. That was obviously a slam dunk bet. Uh, right, we'll get back to talking in a moment, because we have double-suited aces and kings here, which is just about as good as it gets. We'd rather, like, not have that diamond there dangling around, because it obviously hurts our diamond draw, but, yeah, it is what it is. I'm happy that he's put it all in. Hopefully some more people do and then he calls and we can just get to squeeze him the fuck out of the pot. That'd be delightful. Call please. Nice. And hopefully now we can just make it like 40 blinds or something and then be just a really easy hand to play. This guy that puts dead money in that we, we get to flip over or... So what's he got it in with? Here's Queen Deuce Jack. Here's Queen Deuce Deuce Jack. Fair play. And he wins the hand with 
two pairs on the river. Nice. I mean, I don't care about the result of that, and you can't care about results in this game. Um, I do care passionately that I got it in with a huge equity advantage against him, and that's job done. It's just job done. Variance will come, variance will go. Uh, to be fair, I had a decent amount of heat last week. I won more than I should, have, than I could have really expected to, uh, for the games and volume that I put in. Um, if the game takes a little bit back now, then it takes a little bit back now. That can't be helped. Um, but yeah, what an amazing situation that was to get in. We had like this money; it didn't matter anymore. Then we managed to get like a hundred, over a hundred big blinds in, having somebody. About as crushed as they can be crushed in these games. Sadly, it didn't work out. Uh, move on. Uh, no. I found myself playing quite a lot of these types of hands last night. They're like, you know, like raggedy straight possibilities, relatively high flush draw. And um, not a lot of the time. When you make the nuts, uh, well, when you make that the best hand your hand can make, you, you know, quite often, or one of the best hands your hand can make, quite often it's not good enough. So, um, if he had more money, so we could, like, maybe take advantage of what I presume is a decent skill advantage post-flop, then maybe we would have isolated there. But given he was only starting the hand with, like, whatever it was, Less than 20 big blinds. Skill advantage almost goes out the window, especially if you isolate and end up with an SPR of like one. Um, and we've raised Ace King Jack Jack under the gun here and got absolutely no respect. And then we kind of flop pretty fucking badly. We have a gut shot to the nuts, but we can't hit the 10, uh, the red 10, because that. Would give us the non nuts. Um, what we got here? Ace five suited plus kings. With this guy in the blinds, we're definitely going to pot this. I could be persuaded to limp this sometimes in these games because it's not super multi-dimensional. Yeah, we can flop top sets and we can make like nut flushes, but from early position, I think I could play this for a limp in these games, and it would probably be better than raising. Um, you look, we've raised and we've still gone multi way. I haven't managed to like get heads up and be able to utilize some aggression post flop. Oops, so we're in no better situation really than if we'd limp this pre, only that if we had have hit, then um, obviously we would have had a much bigger pot to bet into. So, is that more like a pot builder? A lot of you raises pre flop in these games that fucking internet isn't for value, it's a lot of the time it's just to like build pots so you can make bigger value bets when you flop really well which is why i think it's quite important to um like pump pots up pre-flop with like multi-dimensional hands that can make the nuts in multiple ways and then with your more one or two dimensional i i, I clamp that as like a two-dimensional hand we can flop top set or we can make a nut flush if we can start making some like really strong straights too then i class it as like a three-dimensional hand so we're raising all the hands that i class as being three-dimensional from all positions and then i'll be um the hands that i think are two-dimensional i'll be limping early position and maybe raising from the cutoff and button and the hands that i consider to be one-dimensional i'll be just like limping from all positions um and I think that's a reasonable strategy to take forward in, in games like these. It wouldn't work in maybe higher stakes games with like perhaps more better players at the table. I think I'd probably get squeezed off my equity a little bit too often. But in these games where people are just happy to see cheap flops, then like kind of ranking your hand by dimension, I think it feels like quite a nice thing to do. It works well for my head anyway. Uh, it might not work well for everybody, but for me it's like, right, three-dimensional hands, raise all positions, two dimensional hands raise from late position, one dimensional hands don't raise them, just limp. Um, it, it simplifies preflop quite a lot for me and that um, I'm all about the, the good simplifications, the things that make things like your post up decision making a lot easier. Obviously I still don't know which, you know, I haven't got like a real roadmap in my head of what hands fall into each category by position or anything like that or, or in general, it's still more just feeling it out, hoping to learn by experience, hoping those things become more and more instinctive as we as we um, develop our volume. 
But yeah, I hope that made sense, because it certainly makes sense to me. I'd love one day, I'd love one day, to be confident enough at this game to actually feel like I could deliver a good coaching um, program to people no tri uh, transitioning from no limit. Obviously, I'm nowhere near that yet, but I might start like documenting stuff that I'm learning and just like little things I'm doing to try and improve. Uh, so then, if I do get particularly good at the game, which I'm hoping that I will, I can then legitimately. Because there isn't much PLO5 content out there at all. I can then legitimately, like, offer to... Like, this hand's very one-dimensional. It's basically just top set. So we're just calling this on the button. Uh, and, like, end up flush draw. We have, like, the ace-queen for, like, two broadways. But it looks, in my opinion, this hand is, a, like, a, a trouble hand in terms of it. it I think it looks... A lot better than it actually is. It just doesn't perform that well multi-way. Um, so yeah, to go back to what I was saying, I'd love to be in a position in say six, twelve months' time where I've got like demonstrably good results in these games. To then actually start like um, a little coaching program, get back into doing some coaching because I used to enjoy doing the no limit coaching. I just fell behind the curve in no limit and felt that I wouldn't be good value anymore. But I'd like to get where I'm beating these games really handsomely, can prove it over like at least a reasonable sample size and then hopefully help some of you guys change your poker direction um, and put yourselves back in a situation where you're ahead of the curve rather than behind the curve. I don't know why I did that with my hand there. You can't see it anyway. So yeah, short term goal. So what we're doing here, are we over limping this or are we isolating it? I think we're just going to over limp it. This is very much like a... You could almost argue it's a, a two-dimensional hand because it does some like good straight potential and it has some flush potential, but the the ten of the seven of diamonds aren't to the nuts. Uh, anywhere near the nuts. The king and the eight is, is reasonable, I guess. Um, and now we've flopped like a pretty big straight draw, but we're not going to bet it um, because stuff like that happens a lot. What are we going to do with these queens? I'm not going to set mine against a 12 big blind stack. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to get many folds on that on that flop. And, you know, there's a lot of add-outs are dirty to the straight, so I'm just going to keep that pot small. We've rubbed with the straight, but there's no way we're going to call when someone bets into three people. I mean, the, the four do flush wins it. This guy was actually bluffing. But, um, was he bluffing or did he have a straight? I don't know. But either way, when it goes bet call on the river and you've only got a straight on a flushing board, you're going to be wanting to fold that most of the time in, in these games. So yeah, I've got some big ambitions. First ambition, medium, short-term ambition. Stick out of the game and hopefully, you know, show a small profit in the long in the like the longer term. Medium-term ambition, get fucking good at the game so um, I can create myself... Oh, sorry, maintain the income stream that, that Pork has given me for... A long time now and then long-term ambition get good enough where I can actually perhaps develop some coaching for these games uh, whether you're playing in these clubs or whether you're playing in any site anywhere in the world so here we have plop two pairs with our tens and sevens we have a straight draw with the six and we have like a backdoor nut flush draw I think we're just going to put this dude in up here and then see what he does. So we have now, we haven't got the nuts because Jack 8 would be the nuts. But we have improved to a straight at least. I think we're just going to get it in against this guy. He hasn't done anything to, to let me think he's got a better hand. And we could use making him fold some of his better stuff. He gets it in with 9% and then gets there. So again, good job us. We managed to get somebody in there with 8% equity. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. But, I mean, how delighted can you be? Again, I genuinely, you know, that doesn't bother me 
the tiniest little bit. Um, it would have bothered me, but it's bothered me in the past. I've had all kinds of issues with um, entitlement till, injustice tilt, all those things. Um, I think I'm just more rounded as a player now and just more equipped to deal with that kind of shit when it happens. Especially it takes the word I just don't care. But I do know that kind of stuff is exactly what puts people off playing in these games. Uh, right, what do we have here now? We no longer have... Well, we didn't have the nuts to begin with, but we had the virtual nuts with our top two. We still have our gut shot. We have a two-way gut shot. We have top two still. So I'm going to keep betting, because if we get called, we've still got, still got some equity. If we get called, if we get raised, we're behind, for sure. Uh, the three of hearts isn't good on the river. I think we just have a pretty easy check fold here. We lose to King Jack, we lose to Wheels, we lose to Flushes. I think we have a pretty easy check fold here. Especially against someone who is. Look, just look how passive the guy is. And then he pots it on the river. Nah, we're out. So I'm, I'm definitely getting way, way better at dealing with the frustrations of this game. And as, as I was saying, that is definitely... That's the thing that puts most people off, the variance. They're just... People don't like variance, do they? I don't like it either, but it's, it's part of the game. And... Um, and the guys that deal with variance the best in poker are typically the guys that, that you know, reach the higher levels. Um, I'm getting better at dealing with variance, for sure. Um, I'd have been fucking fuming not so long back. Even at stakes like these, you know, where the money doesn't mean that much to me. I mean, in this video alone, we're probably already like maybe 150 big blinds below EV. But last month, uh, sorry, last week, I made $400 in these games and... Um, there was no way I should have made $400. I, I was getting it in in reasonable shape, in like, you know, in, in three-way pots with 40% equity, but winning my, my, what felt like more than my fair share. So you've got to, you've got to have some perspective. Last week I was the, um, I think it was a pigeon. I was doing, I was one shitting on people, and up to now this week, it appears that I'm the statue, but we'll have a look at my graph at the end of the, at the video. And we'll see that it is generally trending upwards. And, you know, when, when you do have the run good, don't back the winnings. Uh, so then, you know, you've got them there to, to pay back when, you know, the, you do have the run bad. It would be nice if we just, like, got it all in and just managed to keep our equity. And that bang, we're all in. Just give me equity. Forget about various. But that isn't how the game works. And it's, it's not how it should work, of course. Um, it's the variance that enables... The best players to to have the best win rates because they like i said earlier they handle it better and, and what have you but yeah i'm not going to pretend it's not irritating but it feels really sweet to get it in on a term with some guy i've been like eight percent equity because that's like no limit hold them stuff that you know where you just get it in with someone draw where you know when you're playing against wales and you can just get them in drawing dead time and time again to actually achieve that in plo5 is pretty sweet and the fact he smashed a four out on us is neither here nor there you go, he's getting it in with his zero equity again, 9% equity. You want to be engaged with these guys. And when they run good, you've just got to accept that it's that run good that keeps him coming back and redepositing because this guy does not win, but he's still here. You know, he's played 6,000 hands. He's, he's a massive losing player by the looks of things, but he keeps on coming back. And that's because... The game allows him to win sometimes, whereas No Limit Hold'em, it doesn't really allow bad players to win anywhere near as often as Pot Limit Home Hard does, which is why I think these games are growing in popularity with the fish, because they know they're going to lose the money, but in these games, at least they get to win sometimes, where if you had put this guy in the No Limit Hold'em game, he'd almost never get to win. It's just not the, it's just the way No Limit Hold'em works. He'd just be getting absolutely destroyed by regulars all the time. Whereas in this game, he's getting destroyed quite a lot, but you know he's got he's always got outs, hasn't he? He's always got outs to a suck out, um, which is going to keep him coming back. I mean, he's got it in with eight percent equity again. You know, um, yeah. I think in in this game, you've got to learn 
to make variance your friend and just gotta when you do get sucked out on by a whale just like be happy for the fact it happens because it's those suck outs that that keep the game so soft in this case we've got another guy here 78 37 41 big blinds and he's almost breaking even look well he's probably losing money but in terms of like how often is the winner and the fish I got this up I got mine up to 6-6 six, six yesterday now um, last night's session hasn't we when we started making these videos again I think that was 1-5 I managed to get it to 6-6 six, six, and then last night's sessions turned it into a into a 6-8 but we're getting there we are getting there Can't make a long video today. Probably only going to record for another 20 minutes or so because um, I'm doing my first shift today as um, a volunteer driver for Edge UK, delivering hot meals to old folk in my community. Really looking forward to meeting some new people and getting involved in that. Um, I personally, I find it very rewarding that I'm getting involved in in this way you know i'm not doing it for selfish reasons i am doing it to try and contribute to my community during these diabolical times but the fact that you also um get to improve your own self-esteem by doing that and feeling good about yourself and feeling proud about some of the things you do that's that's like a nice side bonus so it's the first day doing that apparently I'm gonna have 17 meals to deliver and apparently it'll only take me an hour and a half um, I'll take the overs on that. I would definitely take the overs on 90 minutes for me delivering 17 meals. Um, but actually, I have no idea what the route is yet. I'm presuming it's going to be in a relatively like small area of the town. I can't see them having me like crisscrossing the town over and over. They have quite a few volunteers, so I, I guess I'd just be given like a district within the town. So maybe, I mean, they seem to know better than me. They, they aim to get their meals delivered between 3.30 and 4.30 in the afternoon. So if they're giving me 17 meals, then presumably they think I can do it in an hour. Maybe maybe slightly more, but we'll see. But either way, looking forward to it, even though it is pissing down. Now, first drag's popped up. So in terms of like how dimensional our hand is, we have like three broadways. If this was slightly better, this the heart flush draw, if that was a king, I think we could definitely consider three betting here. I think we're still going to pop it up versus the straddle because we can make it really quite big and hopefully like not... I mean, if we still go multi-way to the pot here, like four or five ways to the flop then how good are these games and we are going to go five ways to the flop probably because we know this dude ain't folding <laughs> and then we totally brick so perhaps we should just have called that and these are still some of the mistakes i'm making i'm um, overestimating pre-flop fold equity i kind of thought maybe if we make it as big as we could there which we made it 14 or 13 blind whatever it was we might get a couple of these guys out no and let's see what these guys are willing to put. 13 or 14 blinds in. Queen, 8, 8, 3, deuce. And whatever the fuck that is. That gets set and wins. Yeah. So let's put, let's forget pre-flop fold equity is even a thing in these games. Perhaps we could just have called there. And then just like look to. Oh, pots pre. That's the kind of mistake I was making last night. I was trying to like thin the field. And I don't think you do thin the field in this game. Um, certainly not in these games where there's like multiple. You know, we've got two 70v pips at this table. I mean, this guy's the second tightest player at the table playing 44% of hands. So, yeah, I think that's probably a pre flop mistake there. And it almost felt like it was one when I was like, should I do it, shouldn't I do it? It felt like my hand was just too strong not to, but then it comes down that board and you're like, oh, well, my hand's fucking worthless now. And we've torched 13 big blinds. But, of course, the flip side to that is when we flop really well, um, we're going to have like a super low SPR to just get the rest of the money in. So, I don't know. I still don't know whether that is a good squeeze attempt pre-flop or if we should just complete 
against the straddle and take it to the streets. I could, I could be persuaded that either's fine. Probably easy to persuade me that just completing would have been better. Uh, right, so under the gun, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen. But we have no, like, real valuable flush draws. So this, to me, is a one-dimensional hand. It has no, like, massive high card strength. It's got two flush draws that are both pretty shit. Um, so we're just going to be looking to take it to the flop and... You know, maybe we can flop some. If it comes out like six, seven, eight, for example, we can get it in against a plethora of, you know, way worse hands and just get our money in really good. As it turns out, we've flopped now what is now a second nut flush draw. I won't be in a rush to put tons of money in. We do have a backdoor straight draw too. We're not going to be in a rush to put lots of money into this pot. It's not the flop we were looking for, really. Now we turn the second nuts. So I think we can bet fold this turn. Like three fifths put. I think like when it comes to these new games, because I watched some PLO content a week or so back and I enjoyed it. It gave me a, like a grasp of what I need to be doing for the basics. But after that, and I think it's kind of always been my way when it comes to like learning poker, like get some good, really get some like good fundamental basics down and then like figure a lot of the rest of the stuff out for myself. And it, it I haven't watched any PLO training content now for over a week. Um, my results continue to, and I think my level of play continues to improve, apart from last night. I think I like just figuring out my own strategies. Uh, there won't be any content, even if people were making PLO content, they wouldn't be making PLO content, sorry, PLO 5 content. They wouldn't be making it for games with like, these types of players. You already know what the content would be like. It would be centred around... Um, solves for certain situations and I don't want solves for certain situations in these games because we know in these games we should be looking for massive exploits not for solves to keep us like unexploitable and there's definitely an ISO on the button over the straddle I have like three broadways Potential to flop a high set and an up flush draw. We get it in with 59% equity, which is nice. And we hold. Like pre-flop, you're not you're not going to get it in with the big equity advantage very often at all in these games. I think post-flop, the sweet spots around the 60 to 65 percent if you keep getting your money in with 60 to 65 percent equity um when you're fighting over like a lot of dead money that's been created pre-flop then um you're gonna have an extremely positive win rate This dude, he's got lots of chips we need to top up to make sure we have as many chips in play as possible against him. What do we have here? We've flopped a straight with a really weak redraw to a flush.
still have the... No, we don't have the nuts, do we? But I think we are going to bet. I think if someone had the biggest straight, they would have bet the flop. We've got a nice big fat brick on this river, like the king of diamonds or something. Ace, that's a good enough brick for me. And given the Marie was, I don't think he had a bigger straight before. On the turn, still don't think he's got a bigger straight now. And if he has slow played something, then we're going to pay him off for the last nine blinds. And we chop it up. And the beauty about playing these games in, in, in these clubs is that there's such a low rake environment. The rake in these games is 5% um, capped at just three big blinds. And then um, there's a one big blind jackpot drop. So you never, they're never taking more than four big blinds from the pot. Which uh, a lot of the people I do not like No Limit Hold'em is it's like it's considered a very high rake environment. It just isn't, and it, it's not a high rake environment in here. You play more rake than you play in No Limit Hold'em, of course, because the pots are generally a lot bigger. Um, but it's still a comparatively low rake environment. Look at this guy, 85.50. Let's hope he tops his stack up. That'd be nice if he does. Or if he doesn't, let's hope he runs good against other people and tops his stack up that way. When we just like look around at this particular table, we have an 85 V pip, a 78 V pip, and a 60 V pip, and there's like 250 blinds at the table nearly. Um, in the long term, if you're even semi competent, you're going to be printing money at this table. No, I mean, we have two kings here with a flush draw, but it's not a particularly attractive hand. I mean, against an 85.50, we're just going to spin the dice now and just try and get it all in pre and expect to have, you know, an equity advantage. I guess we'll soon tell. We're a straight coin flip. That's a good flop. And that's a nice one now. Here we're going to play this hand. We have limited high card value, shit plus draw there and non-nut plus draw there. If he falls, we'll probably play it. But if he didn't fall, I think we'd probably just let it go. It might seem very nitty, but... So now we have two pairs on a pretty draw-heavy board, of which we have no draws, really. So we're going to check back. Keep checking and just hope to check down a winner. The bets were probably going to fold. I mean, does he play it like he's got ace jack? He could have king queen, he could have some sets. No. Show me an ace, that's clearly not the whole story there. Again here, pretty one-dimensional hand, so we're just going to limp with it. Our flush draws aren't really much use to us, but we do have a nice run down to the queen. Sucks if you raise and then someone wakes up with aces and three bets. Because then, you know, you're putting quite a lot of money in pre-flop with a hand that, you know, can flop really well, but can also, like, get you in trouble. Uh, again here we're just going to overlink with the aces we get a 77 to 87 isolating from the small blind which we like to see we have a lot of options here do we want to squeeze it up to 30 bigs 
Um, I suspect we probably do. Hopefully he repots and we can get this guy out. He does repot. He doesn't care. He's not going to care now either, is he? Oh, here we go. Let's just get 200 big blinds in pre-flop and spin that dice. Roll that dice even. So we're going to be getting it all in, in a four-way pot for chunks and chunks of chips. And we have 38% equity. We're now 60%. 64%. 100%. That is delightful. That is utterly, utterly delightful. And just pause the video and look back at the hands we managed to get all our chips in against there. None of them were worth that amount of money pre-flop. That was an absolutely sparklingly nice pot to win. Just five minutes from the end of the video. That was fun. Well, there, we had aces pre-flop four ways and we had less than 40% equity. So it is a very high variance game. But that, that was nice. I'll be clipping that, that's for sure. I'll be clipping that one. <laughs> so what do we have here? We have... Some straight draw potential. No flush draws to speak of. Backdoor flush draw, I guess. We make a straight, but potential flush out there. It's going to get small. And now the board's paired the river. So now we, we're at such a long way from the nuts here. We're just going to check and fold. And we still win. I don't think bluffing rivers is a thing in this game very often what do we have here nothing we have really enjoyed that enormous pot we won and that's possibly the sweetest pot so far not the biggest pot in money because we've played higher stakes but in terms of big blinds that might be the biggest pot of one to date I don't like it when tables break down like this because it starts to get a little bit too fast for me. Obviously, I love having the Jesus seat on a 76-13, 78-13 even. But this hand, this table was a little bit short-handed too at one point. And um, I think I start to make mistakes, start to feel rushed and um, lose a lot of my edge against this guy because of that. In fact, if this table goes heads up, I think we'll probably just end the video because we're getting up to 45 minutes anyway. And much as I enjoy playing this guy heads up in general, um, well, I'm going to have to play for a bit because I forgot to hit the call time button. But we're not going to keep recording it. We're just going to... Um... Ah, fuck it. We'll keep recording it. Probably play. Well, I'm gonna have to play for them 15 minutes, so we will play till the end of this this call time section. Flop middle set. That's a good starting place, and we block top set, which is even nicer. We don't block 10-9, which is now the notes. So I'm gonna check back because I do not want to be check raised at this point. And we're just gonna check down our middle set now. do a lot of limping from the button against this fellow I'm not going to be defending this if he raises we're just going to let it go because it's utter fucking garbage we we've got a flush
But this guy's taking his time all of a so he clearly didn't really want to play a heads up. It looks like he's like trying to stall to see if the table fills again. I prefer it if he just left, to be honest. And I never thought he was myself saying that about a 78-13 with a 134 big blind stack. But I would prefer it if he left because I could leave and then we could just wrap the video up. Yeah, he's definitely like in go slow mode. shot here. Neither of which is to the nuts because the jack 10 is already the nuts. And if a jack comes then king 10 becomes the nuts. Mint racing. Happy days. Let's take a flop still. And then he checks, which could be a trap, or it could just be his weak, but we're not going to allow him to check raises. We're going to check back, because there's some reasonable turns for us, that being one of them. We now have the up and down straight draw and the nut flush draw. And then we break out. Then we break out. Could make an argument for perhaps raising that turn with our like nut draws, but happy just to try and realise my equity. Here we have like a what I consider a two dimensional hand. We have the nut flush draw, we have three broadways, and then a shitty flush draw backing it up. So we kind of want to see a flop with this hand, but we don't want to see an expensive flop. Gonna be a semi expensive flop by Big Blinds Ma. 4.5 big blinds more, sorry, but obviously we're going to try and um, take a flop against the 63.17, who we are close to 300 big blinds deep with. Flop the nuts over here. And on this table we flop pretty much nothing. And we're going to have the easy fold. We no longer have the nuts over here. Nine ten is now the nuts, so we're a long way from the nuts. I think we maybe have to pay this guy off if he bets. Check back, hope to win. And we do. Maybe missed some value on the turn there, but being raised there would have absolutely stunk. Happy to see another player join. Uh, I guess someone raises 5%, then I think we'll just let this 
pretty marginal hand go. Yeah, we have like flopping a decent set potential, but you know this flame, this game's more about straights, flushes, full houses, and sets. They win small pots on rivers, but they tend not to win big ones. a reasonable flop for us here with the good shot on the not flush draw. Desperately try and get in pots with this guy, but I want something more substantial than that. I think from the button this is a super standard open. Not a hand we want to get three bet with though. We flop two pairs and a second nut flush draw. I think we can bet and defend versus a raise. Okay, and I think we can bet here. Be less excited about being raised on the turn because now it's a bigger part the raise is going to be bigger. And I guess that a turn check raise represents more strength than a flop check raise would. I still think our hand's too strong to bet. And we river a flush, but the board's paired and it's not the nut flush, so he's going to take our showdown. And he was calling a game with a very marginal hand. And now he's left, so... There we go. Well, I don't think we can still leave. No, we're still on the call time clock. Oh, now we can leave. Let's get stood up quickly before somebody joins, because now we can wrap the video up. Um. So yeah, this is how we've been doing for the month. Is it just PLO? Yep. So, month. So we're up 15,000 chips. Each thousand chips is worth $20. So we're up 15, 20. So it's $300 for the month. So like I say, last night's hit. And most of this has been from like the one from just last week. So it's the same for the month, but it's probably just for maybe, maybe eight days, eight or nine days. Um, so yeah, that's how the month's gone. It's how today's gone. As you can see, like last night was just like down, 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 down to whatever that lowest point was. I think at one point, I think my lowest point was like 7,700, which is what, like $150 maybe, something like that, just over. And now we've managed to get it back to, you know, we've clawed maybe $60 back during this session in no small part to that due to that huge pop we won um so yeah it's going well and i'm really hoping that it's not going to happen overnight hoping i can convince more and more of you guys to to give pot limit omaha or even better the five card variant um more of a go so we can have more conversation with you guys Ideally, I'd like you to join me in these clubs, but if you don't and you play on your side of choice, then great. I'm still more than happy to discuss strategy with you. I think this could already be a mistake, because again, it's a lot of trouble I was getting into last night with stuff like this that looks really pretty, but it's, it's only really nutted to the straights. We're not going to continue with just our king here if this dude bets. We're not going to like bet to try and win the pot, because I don't think we ever get a better hand to fold. 
I think for that price we kind of just have to call and just try and get to showdown. That's like really bad river. And now we're just going to check fold even versus a small bet because we don't beat 2x. We don't beat ace x. We don't beat any, maybe a turn to set of 8 or something. Good for him. So he gets to win. That's going to be the end of the video. I'm going to go and um, catch up with my messages and then prepare myself to go out and um, do some do some of the work that, um, that I'm looking forward to doing. So take care, everybody. Have a smashing week. Hopefully, keep your eyes peeled, especially in the Facebook group, for a No Limit Hold'em video that will hopefully come out sometime tomorrow. But for now, we'll leave it there. Take care, everybody, and goodbye for now.